Hello and welcome to Plus One to Gaming. Chris here, and today we're talking about Armor Class, part six of our ongoing character creation series. We're going to cover what Armor Class is, how to calculate it, and different ways to use it in-game. Let's get into it. Armor class is the numerical representation of your character's defense. The higher the number, the better your defense is, and the less likely an enemy will be able to hit you. AC can be the armor you're wearing, like a paladin's plate mail. It can be your natural defenses, like shells or scales. Or it can rely on your reflexes and agility, like an acrobatic rogue. Finding your total armor class number is usually pretty easy, but there are some nuances because your ability scores, race, class, feats, equipments, proficiencies, all can influence your armor class. It's important to know that if your character has several ways of calculating their armor class, you can only use one method. For example, the lizard folk from Volos can either use their natural armor or equipped armor, but not both. They also can't stack natural armor with class features like the Barbarian's unarmored defense. You have to pick. When calculating your armor class, you gotta look at all the areas your AC could potentially come from. First, are you a race that uses natural armor like a lizard folk or turtle? And do you want to use your natural armor? Some races, like turtles, can't even wear armor, which makes that decision pretty easy. Second, are you playing a class that uses other defenses like the Barbarian or Monk? You can refer to your classes section on the player's handbook to determine your armor class. If you decide to wear armor, your class dictates what kind of armor you can wear proficiently. Wearing armor you aren't proficient in imposes disadvantage on all ability checks, saving throws, or attack rolls that use strength or dexterity, and you can't cast spells, so not worth it. Once you know what armor you're wearing, you can just refer to the player's handbook armor chart to get your base calculation. Additional equipment, like shields, can add to your armor class. A shield does stack with natural armor, so a lizard folk with 17 natural armor could bump that up to a very durable 19 with a shield. You also might have a class feature, like the fighter's defense fighting style, which adds plus one to your AC if you're wearing armor. So, that wouldn't apply to characters using natural armor. And there's also feats that can boost your armor class, like medium armor master or dual wielder, or boost it situationally like Defensive Duelist. And we'll be covering feats in depth in a later video. Magic is also a source of defense, with temporary boosts coming from a range of spells, though they usually don't go into our base calculations. You can also use Cover to temporarily boost your armor class in combat. Half Cover provides plus 2, and 3 quarters Cover provides plus 5 to your armor class. Thinking like a tactician can boost your survivability, and think about what you would do in a combat situation. I mean, especially if you're a wizard or a rogue or a ranger, you wouldn't just be standing out in the middle of combat. You'd be using cover, and you would be doing whatever you can to keep yourself safe. So from a technical standpoint, that's what armor class is and how to get to it. You know, when you're using AC, you're calculating the probability of something getting through a character's defenses. But how do you use armor class from a role-playing perspective? As a DM, I like to use the calculations to influence how I flavor the results. Here's an example. If a goblin rolls low on its attack against a seasoned fighter, I might say something like, fumbling slightly, the goblin slices a wide arc with its rusty cutlass that clangs harmlessly off your shield. If that attack was a hit, but rolled low damage, it might be more like, uh, thrusting its cutlass erratically, the goblin catches you off guard, drawing a small cut on your thigh. The reverse is true for players attacking monsters or bad guys. And going back to our Zero Session episode, knowing about the characters, their armor, their fighting style, and how they play will give you the ammunition you need to bring life to armor class in your game. Personally, I just try to think of cool ways to resolve things. I try not to use the same thing over and over again. One of the biggest influencers for me has been playing you know, text-based RPGs or MUDs growing up, which really instilled this in me. I also pull from other areas of interest, you know, books, video games, movies, anime, uh, anywhere I can get inspiration and bring that flavor to the game. What do you think? How do you like to bring life to armor class? Let us know in the comments section. 
Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thanks so much for watching and we'll catch you next time.